welcome back to a new video and this video today is on my Suzuki Swift Sport 2009 that is and I'm going to talk about some things I like because since I've been driving this car I've actually fell in love with it and I'm not even driving the Audi anymore Audi's off the road till the summer so this is the new chariot so we won't waste any time we'll get straight into what I like about this Suzuki Swift so for the first thing I like I'm going to talk about the cabin of the Suzuki Swift now what do I like about this cabin number one headroom some reason the roof is really tall but i really like it you don't feel like you're in a sports car but you know you can sit up straight like even if i sit up as straight as i can i'm nowhere near the roof so it's good for your passengers if you're very tall look how much room i have i'm sitting here i'm a bit high this is the lowest the chair goes so that's, i'm a bit high that's the only thing i don't like but there's loads of room for your legs loads of room for the passenger so the next thing i like about the spacious cabin Windscreen. Windscreen's massive, making it good for your view, of course. Yeah, that's pretty much it about the window. Also, I like how simple it is in here. The dashboard's not cluttered with stuff. There's no pods or anything. Everything's just simple. Obviously, it's 2009. It's getting on. It's just a simple car. Not the most sporty in here. The seats are obviously good. They are pretty sporty. So point number two, why I like the Suzuki Swift is how it drives. This car has surprised me. Not the fastest of things. Obviously, I've said that in my first video. It handles like a dream. Even though my suspension's wobbling because uh, the top mount's knackered, I can fly around the corners in confidence with this thing, knowing it's going to grip and the handling. It's just so direct. I drove from Wales to Brecon, or Wales is Brecon, from North Wales to Brecon, sorry. And this car was mint. Down the back roads, hammered the shit out of it, and it loved it. That's, that's, that's a good point. The last thing about the handling, the steering's heavy. I cannot stress enough how much having heavy steering makes the car feel better. If you've got light steering, the car feels shit. So we come on to number three, and that's how cheap this car is to run. £300 a year for insurance for me, which is pretty good. It's probably the cheapest insurance I've ever had. Fuel in this car is really cheap. On a motorway, not so good, because obviously five gears and it revs. On the back roads, 200 miles I did, and I did it on 20 quid. You can't go wrong for that. For a little motor like this, that's pretty mint. And the parts are really cheap for this car. On research, everything is literally dirt cheap for this. I'm pretty poor, hence why I haven't done anything for this year, and I can't afford even the cheap stuff. But we will be getting a lot of work done on this very soon because it fucking needs it. Now, the only downfall with pricing, I could say, is the tax. The tax is pretty dear. It's about £37 a month, so it's pretty dear. 1.6 petrol. You can't, you've got to expect it for the type of engine. And the emissions. Yeah, so number four now, we're going to talk about the sound of this bad boy. I really like the sound of it. It takes me back to when I was young. So let's talk about the sound. And there are two must-haves, I must say. If, especially if you're a young driver and you like a bit of noise. Especially on this car. Let's get straight into it. The first thing you need, and this could be a Halford Special or anything, but apparently the one on this is quite a, a rare intake. But you need an intake system on this to hear the variable valve timing scream at its loudest. It just sounds amazing. And you want to get yourself a custom-made exhaust system, because this thing sounds nuts. A bit loud but nuts. And the last thing about the sound of this car takes me back to my younger days. When you shift gears with a nice exhaust and an intake, you get this, especially a naturally aspirated car, you get this like pause where it goes like, what? When you're changing, then it just goes, Bop! I absolutely love it. And finally, we come on to number five and we'll talk a little bit about the overall design of the Swift. Now, it's not the most standing out thing, but it has got some sporty features. I'll show you what they are now. We've got dual pipes on the rear. Got a nice little spoiler. We've got a honeycomb style grill. Been painted very bad. But overall, for sportiness, that's about it. The front end of the car, it looks like a normal car, to be honest. But that's good. It makes it blend in with the rest of the car, so you don't look like a sporty boy racer knobhead like me. And the last point about the car, for the design, they focus more on the sound, the engine, the way it runs. This car would run forever. Like, it's got so many problems, I ain't gonna lie. There's loads of problems on this car that I need to rectify. But the thing runs and it still goes. If that was the Audi, it would be flashy lights up, electrics wouldn't like it, but this thing goes. So they focus on the engine, focus on the gearbox. Gear, gear changes are amazing in this car. Um, there is a bit of a whine from the gearbox, but I don't know why, because it has had a new one. Yeah, but stuff like this, they didn't focus on. So if you listen to the sound of this door, yeah. Sounds like a tin can. Now, yeah, that's pretty much it about the Swift. They've they've put a tin can doors. It's not, you know, they haven't focused on the styling too much. They've put a couple of sporty bits, but they focus on the engine more. And I have a lot of fun, and the handling especially. I have a lot of fun in this car, more than the Audi, I must say. The Audi is very, very good, obviously. It's just so easy to drive, but this thing is really fun. <sighs> yeah, anyway. Overall, the Suzuki Swift is amazing, I'm not going to lie, I've literally fallen in love with it, I never thought I would. Japanese engine, amazing. Japanese build, amazing. The quality, 
not so good but this car i would say is more for a younger generation like, it's not a car that i would personally buy yeah so i just wanted to do a quick five things i like about this car for anyone looking to buy one and a few of the potential modifications you can do to it you know it needs lowering it's like it's on stealth but to be honest Suzuki smashed the handle on this even though it's like on stilts it still handles like a dream so yeah there's a few reasons why i think you should buy the suzuki swift sport it is an amazing car i'm not gonna lie i actually i own a 2018 audi tt which has obviously got all the b's and e's equipment i can love this thing even so that my audi is not on the road anymore because i'm driving this and my audi's broke thank you for watching the video we're gonna end it here just a quick video for this weekend because i'm away at the minute and I've, i i'm going to tools or anything to actually do any jobs so the jobs will be coming back soon i do want to get this car fixed up and swap it for something else so if anybody wants to swap for a suzuki swift give me some messages i've got a lot of work to do so the car will be mint once it's done but that's it for the video please give the video a like subscribe if you haven't already and i hope you look forward to the modifications and the fixing of the suzuki swift peace